أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم رب لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الحمد لله The hadith of Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam in which it's hadith narrated by Sayyidina Umar in the Sihah their Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you didn't give it to me. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. That hadith is Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad has three, Sayyidina Jibreel asks four questions in it. He asks, Mal Islam, Mal Iman, Mal Ihsan, Umata Sa'a. So he mentions three, th- four things. And much has been said about the first three that Islam, that that religion is not just uh, establishing uh, the five pillars; that there's also more things that one can attain. A heart full of iman that's another station and level, and to reach this station of moral excellence is the third level. But not much is discussed in terms of the fourth question is when is the judgment day Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad it's good every time I get, have to say salawat on Prophet <laughs> Alhamdulillah and from from the question that Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam included that question the judgment day in order to point to the importance of paying attention to our time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allotted for us on earth and that there will be an end to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as this, this life cycle that he gave this, this earth and the inhabitants, that there is a judgment, there is, there is a day when it will all end. So uh, Muslims have to be yeah, a Muslim has to be kayis, has to be smart, has to be wise, has to look around him and read the signs of what's going on. Can't just go like horses with uh, those things they put on their eyes so they don't see anything around them. We have to know what is what, what time we're living in and we have to look at the prophetic advice that's appropriate for that time. Every, every uh, Prophet Sallallahu didn't leave anything that he didn't inform his Ummah of what's coming. And so we, we need to be pay attention to uh, our environment, our circumstances, and we need to pay attention to the age we live in. And that is a very important issue because if you don't, if you're not paying attention to what's happening around you and if you're not reading the signs of what's happening around you reading them with what through the through the insight of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu not reading them through cnn or fox news or social media or facebook but through the the prophecies of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu he said that there will come a time where haraj and maraj will increase, will killing will increase, will increase. There will come a time when the the more one does to be involved with the events of the time, the more they're in danger of being sucked into something that they shouldn't be sucked into. Even whoever looks at these dark ch- chunks of confusion they will be sucked into it. So, alhamdulillah, not everyone has a, a shaykh, a teacher, a compass to, uh, for those who are following a murshid, a guide, it is much easier because you always look to your guide to see where the compass is pointing and how you should behave in, you know, in the time that you, the, the difficult things are happening. But in general, we have to we have the hadith of Akhir Zaman, and we have the ability to 
go to those who know alhamdulillah and 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 see what what should i do now unfortunately yani our our attention span is so limited these days and our emotional i'm sorry to say state is is not very stable especially with all the difficult things that are happening with with the corona issue with the lockdown with the materialism with the with the technology and social media so we're really fragile as human beings and we're really um prone it's easy to to deceive us why am i bringing all this because we are witnessing things around us on daily basis now we are witnessing all these things uh, we have all witnessed the 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 horror of what's happening in palestine and in, in the gaza strip and in jerusalem and the wrong that is being done that's and that wrong that's being done is only the symptom of the disease and this is a severe symptom of the disease of the imbalance and the zulm the oppression that's taking place on earth today uh, the the toxic materialism that we're all living under is manifesting itself in its ugliest face in that conflict in the middle east uh, you have uh, a country that's armed to the teeth with western latest weaponry with unconditional support financially uh, that is oppressing people that have nothing masakin yani the people have absolutely no resources uh, they're completely locked in they can't even escape their reality they can't even run away to somewhere else they're just completely locked and this is this is yani this is what's happening all over earth if you look from china to russia to the middle east to syria to yemen to whatever it is this oppression is taking place in different manifestation and allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad as painful as it is to witness and as hard as it is to witness the crying of the innocent that have nothing to do with have done nothing to deserve this we have to say why is this happening why is this happening to muslims why is this happening now to us the prophet saw wasallam in ghazwat badr 313 companions we just finished ramadan on the 17th of ramadan were able to defeat with two horses were able to defeat an army of a thousand soldiers with 200 horses and they didn't even come prepared they weren't thinking to, that they will fight an army and allah gave them victory and then prophet وسلم, taught us what constitutes uh, uh, why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives such a, a, a an army uh, victory with with all the odds against them because of their complete love and obedience to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, because of their complete uh, submission to the teaching and then he shows us in Ghazwat Uhud because part of the army a group a small group disobeyed Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, instruction although that this time they were prepared they were armed they were ready but because of that instance of those 50 archers disobeying sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them defeat against their enemies 
And that was at the time of the Sahaba, that was the criteria for Allah's support and victory, or it's like, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empowering others against us. And now if you look at this across the, the globe and see the condition of Muslims, and you'll understand where we are spiritually in terms of following the guidance of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And why we are not, we are yani, uh, under humiliation everywhere. This is the something that nobody, yani, people don't want to face up to. That we as Muslims, we need to go back to the, to figuring out our relationship with our Prophet Sallallahu and be, and align our lives according to the way his hadi and guidance that he brought, and then everything else would line up. And looking at everything that's happening, and from what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu has foretold us, this is highly unlikely now, that the Muslim Ummah is gonna straighten up in order to receive Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala's victory until we have our Imam until we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending someone to unify us to straighten us up Sayyidina al-Mahdi alayhi salam this is highly unlikely to happen so what does one do one in this time tries their best to keep that connection to Prophet sallallahu to try to follow as much his sunnah and his way to try to be a positive influence in their immediate environment if they can even help oppressed Muslims everywhere. Prophet Sallallahu said in, in his hadith that um, whoever sees a munkar, something that is wrong, if he can change it with his hand, let him. If he cannot change it, if he can change it with his tongue, let him. If he can't change it with either, then with his heart, وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ imam Prophet Sallallahu said, that is the weakest of iman. We can, as Muslims now, we can from wherever we are, make dua for our Muslims brother, at least with our hearts, at least with our tongues, we can uh, pray for them. Prayer is, is more powerful than, than I think a lot of Muslims now behave, be, believe in, in dua. Yani, we need to have certainty of belief when it comes to making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his hand hadith of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas when he was a young boy Prophet وسلم, in that hadith he says to him if all of creation decide to harm you and Allah does not want to harm you they cannot they all يعني, conspire to harm somebody everyone in creation and if all in creation, all people around you gather together to stop a harm from coming to you and Allah wants it to reach, they cannot prevent it. We need to have that certainty and belief that our condition is in Allah's hand. Our safety is in Allah's hand. Our uh, uh, dignity is in Allah's hand. And we need to uh, help each other with the best way we can. Today, inshallah, we will recite a dua that uh, was tried and tested by uh, Abu Sayyidina Abu Hassan al Shadri, the dua of uh, Hizb al Nasr. This is an example of that certainty of belief that when they were in the battle, they would recite these duas against the French when Napoleon attacked Egypt. They they, uh, they they did miraculous things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them that support. It is said that this dua also uh, during the Algerian uh, struggle against the French was forbidden uh, to uh, be recited by the French uh, because uh, because they were also the French witnessing some of that karamat of that dua. So inshallah after the zikr we will recite.